So when these violations occur, the players are getting penalized by not being able to go to a postseason, whether it's the Final Four or bowl games. Right. The departments are getting penalized with the lack of scholarships and ability to bring in new players. Why is it that the coaches who are often lockstep in with the violations getting off scot-free? Well, because, again, the schools, um, the, the schools know that the coach is going to continue to coach, continue to bring in the big money. and But you make an interesting point that, that the kids are the ones that are hurt. Mm -hmm. And that's interesting because that's the big critique of this system. That's the consistent critique of this system is that everyone is making money except these kids. These kids are, uh, granted they're being given, you know, a scholarship for four years if they remain healthy to go and take advantage of whatever academic opportunities are offered to them. But it's really a system that some people have compared to slavery, that have said uses, uses slave labor. These kids are expected to go into this multi-billion dollar business, not take a dollar from boosters, not um, have an agent, not have anyone representing them, just play for sort of the glory of the university while the university racks in mm -hmm. all this money on top of this free labor. And then um, the, other, the other critique of it is that, that these kids really aren't getting an education. They're going, they're going into these cake courses and departments that are they're sympathetic to the athletic mission and that they end up at the end of four years with 60 or 70 credits no opportunity and no prospects for a pro career and they end up going back to wherever they came from whatever farm whatever inner city neighborhood they came from and it's overnight it's all gone no more tutoring no more training table no more uh, uh, you know being the big man on campus and that's the real tragedy of this system I you know there's one statistic that keeps popping up throughout the book over and over this idea that and it's two percent and, and what I mean by that is about 2% of the kids who play high school basketball get NCAA scholarships to play basketball. Less than 1% of those kids have any meaningful NBA career. They may pay for a couple mm -hmm. years or go play in the World League or something. So it's really a lie that's being told to these kids, this idea that, okay, you play hard, you study hard, and this will lead this will lead to a pro career. And in reality, it's not true. And the media compounds it by focusing on the 2% of kids who make it and completely ignoring the 98% of kids who, again, end up back home, 60 credit hours, no degree, no future. It really is tragic the way we treat some of these kids. It's a system that uses these kids and then just throws them away when they're done with them. This excerpt is brought to you by the Massachusetts School of Law, the leader of reform in legal education and a leader in multimedia education for the public. To view the full interview and for a full listing of MSL's programs, log on to mslaw.edu.